Hi. Uh, today we're going to go over Chapter 13, which, which is starting to get into uh, uh, some of the more recent um, times. This is 1945 to 1960. Um, your teachers will be able to begin to start telling stories um, uh, about some of this time period. Um, this is the beginning of the Cold War. And following World War II, there became, there were two major powers. There was the Soviet Union, the USSR, and there was the United States. And, and the reason this is called the Cold War is because these two countries did not go to war with each other, but we, we supported countries who went to war with each other. Um, um, and we would try to create problems for the other country uh, wherever we could because uh, there were two different governmental systems um, um, and, and we felt like we had the best one and they felt like they had the best one and so, so there was a lot of uh, issues around essentially who was right, okay? And so um, um, in, in following World War II, um, the, the Soviet Union and Joseph Stalin had promised that in Poland and, and we'll call the Eastern Bloc countries, East Germany, uh, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, uh, there would be free elections. That was one of the things that, that um, uh, Stalin had promised. And indeed, he did have free elections in those countries. But they weren't free like we think of free elections. What he did is he said, you can freely elect these people, but there's only one person on the ballot, right? And, and, and what Stalin was concerned about was Germany had rolled into Russia or the Soviet Union twice in the last 40 years. Um, there was essentially uh, uh, killing 40, 50 million Russians. And he said, this will never happen again. And so the countries around the border of Russia, we are going to control so that Germany uh, will, will never think um, about invading Mother Russia again. And so, so the countries that surrounded Russia became puppet governments of the Soviet Union. And uh, they became known as the Iron Curtain countries. And, and so um, we looked at and Eisenhower and the United States looked at um, um, the Soviet Union as being a very suspicious sort of country. And, and um, um, following 1948-49, we got involved in the Korean War, um, um, which was the North Koreans communist invading the South Korea, which was, we'll, we'll call them, Democratic, they weren't really, but we'll we'll call them that. And so um, the United States and the United Nations went in to stop um, um, the the communists from defeating the the, the Democratic um, um, South Korean government. And so what happened is is we we pushed them up, pushed them um, up almost into China, and then China got involved. China was communist by 1949, and, and, uh, um, and that would eventually push the United Nations troops back to where um, it is today. And essentially what they did is they divided the country down the middle um, and created a no man's land where they put landmines and, and lots and lots of troops, and that's where that is today. Um, um, uh, in the United States, there became uh, almost sort of huge suspicion that, that people within the United States government were selling secrets to the Russians. Um, um, there was a huge issue when, when the Soviet Union exploded their first atomic bomb is who gave them the secrets. Um, um, there was a big trial by the Rosenbergs uh, who were put on trial about them selling secrets of the bomb uh, to, to the Soviet Union. Uh, you should certainly look this up. They're in this book. Um, um, the first, one of the first women executed in the United States was Ethel Rosenberg, who was convicted of selling secrets to the Soviet Union. Um, um, so, and for a long time, people felt that they were railroaded and, and that, um, um, in fact, that um, they were they were put on trial, it was essentially a sham trial. 
and people were executed who didn't do anything. Um, and it wasn't until after the fall of the Soviet Union where we got to look at some documents that suggested that, in fact, the Rosenbergs were deeply involved um, in giving secrets, atomic secrets, to the, to the Soviet Union. Um, but, but during this time, there were loyalty oaths that were, that were given. Um, all of your teachers that, that uh, work with you all signed loyalty oaths directly from this time period that we, we had to sign something that says we will not, um, um, you know, be traitors and, uh, to our country and treat, teach you, I don't know, bad stuff that could make you become, you know, a, a bad citizen. Um, um, so anyway, that, uh, uh, this, is, this is during a time of great suspicion um, um, where, where people were worried about uh, um, uh, nuclear, nuclear war. Um, people were building bomb shelters in their backyard. The earthquake drills that, that you practice and you know, where you get under your desk. Um, when I was going to school, those were called, and I, I went to school here in L.A., those were called nuclear attack drills. And you were supposed to do a duck and cover drill and get under your desk and it would save you from a nuclear attack. That's what we were dealing with. So um, anyway, I encourage you to go on, on YouTube and look at some of the old duck and cover drills. Um, I think you'll find those to be fascinating. Uh, the Berlin Wall, the um, um, being built, um, um, because those are certainly available, and I would encourage you to go look at those. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this chapter, and I'm sure we'll see you soon.